I know the simple way to get rock and roll. I know the simple way to get you out of control. I can manipulate it like a doll. I say. <laughs> I have finally removed the old fuel pump from the basket, right? And this is how it looks when you compare it with the new one. Uh, as you can see, they are pretty much uh, similar size. This is supposed to go here, right? But of course, yeah, there, there is a problem with the size, but nothing that cannot be fixed. The diameter of the new fuel pump is around 39 millimeters and this happens to be almost exactly the same diameter as in here in the basket. There is just a slight different difference uh, I guess around 0.1 millimeter maybe. Uh, a bit bigger problem are those lined shape bruises are four of them in here I don't know if you can see this uh, so I will just grind them using this tool and the new pump should fit so I've grinded quite a lot of material out of the sleeve but the new pump still wouldn't fit so I've decided to take a different approach um, as you can see this sleeve is held in place by those three uh, plastic springs um, so when I've used this saw blade to make a split in the sleeve those springs have actually pushed it aside even farther creating this nice gap over here yeah so with this gap the internal diameter inner diameter of the sleeve is now now much bigger and the pump yeah slides right in yeah, it's even a little bit too loose, so um, I'm going to use this uh, band, uh, well, of course, a bigger version of that, this metal band to clamp it in place, yeah, and this should be secured, secured quite good. Um, yeah, there is still a lot of plastic residue everywhere, so I've put those caps on, uh, back on to, to prevent the contamination of the pump. Of course, I will give it a nice clean before putting this back in the tank. Yeah, and now the last thing that I need to do is take this uh, socket with wires and solder those wires to the original one here and this will be ready to go back in the tank. Great! As a bonus, let me explain uh, where is the signal from fuel gauge coming from. So, here we've got this uh, fuel pump assembly, and as you can see, there are three wires coming in, and there is a, there are two sliders and this resistive line made of carbon. So, when this float is uh, up, so you've got the full tank, as you can see, the resistance between this black wire and uh, uh, and the brown one is around 4 ohms, so it's pretty low. And when the 
fuel is uh, coming, fuel level is coming down. As you can see, the resistance is uh, going up, 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 up until you got empty tank, and it's around 300 ohms, 310 maybe. Yeah. In older constructions of the to make the instrument cluster cheaper without any microcontroller, there was also this third wire, this yellow in here. Um, and this wire is here only to use the second slider to show the low amount of fuel on your instrument cluster. So let me just change it. Yeah, so we've got some fuel still left. As you can see, there is nothing. Uh, zero ohms, right? I mean, uh, sorry, uh, open circuit, so the fuel is going down, down, down. Yep, and finally we're detecting low fuel level. Okay, so let's put it back in. Let's see if it works. Yeah, I can hear it. Yay! Yeah. 